Hello everyone, I'm Al from AlValentine.co and welcome to Lichdom Battle Mage. Now the game has been out for quite some time, but I recently picked it up from the Steam sale for Fiverr. Unfortunately the price has gone back up to 39.99 euro, but it's a very interesting game. It's a first person spellcasting game, which is quite rare, and when you do find it in games like Skyrim or Oblivion, it's never particularly good. Except here they've simplified and complicated it in strange ways that actually make it fun. Very fun. Now the game is quite long, I have about 6 hours in, and it doesn't seem to have an end in sight just yet, which is not bad, I kind of like long games, especially if the story is good. Although the story here is a bit odd, to say the least. Essentially you start in a normal town, you're a normal little person, you're talking to your sister, or family, you can choose male or female. All hell breaks loose, the place is attacked by monsters, demons and all sorts of things. You're killed, everyone's being murdered and captured and taken away. And then, someone shows up, brings you back to life, gives you magical bracelets, and suddenly you are a dragon, his force of justice and power. And then you are set on your task for revenge and to save the world in some ways. So let's get into the options menu graphics of course and wow this game has a lot and does it really want run well oh yes my two 980 ti's i'm actually capping the game at my monitor's refresh rate of 144 at g-sync and it is spectacular i've got everything set to high nothing's higher than very high so i've got everything on there one thing you'll notice is i can't enable chess effects now the developer has disabled an nvidia hardware here is their comment. And this is strange because AMD always berate NVIDIA for any games or titles saying they are, you know, handicapping their performance or sabotaging their performance through these features. But if you look at it, it's happening right here. TraceFX is supposed to be an open standard that runs on AMD and NVIDIA. It's disabled for NVIDIA hardware. At least with Hairworks, you can run it on The Witcher 3 and you can adjust its settings to the latest patch or on the drivers to get acceptable performance. Here, we didn't even have a choice, but ignoring that, the game is quite good. Now, I'm playing on Difficulty Battle Mage, which is the second highest. It's still quite difficult, and it's a lot of fun. The tutorials and everything, I wouldn't recommend skipping them. Sound options are fairly basic. One thing I will notice, though, while the graphics is good, it uses the Crisis 3 engine, CryEngine 3. Facial animations are not great. Crisis 1 had much better. You can kind of see where they put their development budget in, which is all the spell crafting and everything. But without further ado, let's get in and show you what it's like. Great, so we've loaded in. Now, one thing that's very interesting is you don't have a set amount of magic. When you get here, these are your save points. It uses a weird checkpoint system like this, but if you see if I hold F to activate, I can fast travel between places and have sigil assignments. Now, sigils are the type of magic you have. They're essentially the gems on your bracers. Now, once you start, you only have fire, then you have ice, and then you have anything else that you can get. My favorites are fire, telekinesis, and necromancy, but there's also ice, lightning, corruption, and some more. You unlock them as you progress. But not only that, they're not set. You actually also have a very good crafting system. Now, here you can press I to open your equipped spells where you literally you equip spells that you've created and you can upgrade them you'll notice some are blue some are orange some are purple they work on the MMO style of basic you know magical rare and legendary and epic which is kind of cool now I prefer this combo of fire lots of damage I've upgraded quite a lot Necromancy is all about the minions, and it has a cool green evilly glow. And Kinesis just slows them down and anchors them. I kind of use it just for crowd control, and then you have your shield spell. Going out of this, you'll notice in the bottom right, I've got three blue bars. Those are my shields. Now, you can also upgrade your shield magic to be stronger and have special effects. You can also use it by pressing right click. That's your shield spell ability there. If you time that just right, if someone hits you, you'll knock back their force and you'll actually put out a nova of your own things. So I've got necromancy equipped, roll the mouse, I've got kinesis, kind of cool, and then of course, fire. Now you can have a basic attack, you just click, or you charge it up, you get a big power form, or if you hold right click for shield and attack, you 
charge of an area of effect one. It's beautiful. You know, the main attraction of the game is magic, of course. And once you go here, you go to custom inventory, which has all these fancy things. Then it also has a synthesis one where you can upgrade, deconstruct magic spells and reforge them, or you can actually craft your own. So if we put in fire there, we can put in all these fancy bits that you collect and create a very, very interesting spell, which is kind of cool. So you can mix and match to create your own unique spell and then you can craft it. But you can notice as you level up, you also get better upgrades. You can actually combine and create better spells as well. Going back there quickly, but just by clicking on one, you'll see that they all have their own unique bits as well. And it actually does a really good job for what they are. I really enjoy it. So let's go in and show you what this world is like. It's pretty damn nice, but we've got to save it all and destroy the undead hordes and the twins that are controlling everything. Now, once you kill an enemy, yes, you do find these little bits of lore everywhere. Once you kill an enemy, you'll notice it puts out this magical little orb that floats towards you, or you have to go and collect it. These are your spell upgrades. And you kind of want as many as possible. These bits here are for your shields. I've got full shields, so I don't have to worry. Now, while the game is quite good looking, it's not spectacular. And it is, it's very CPU dependent, I'll tell you that. As soon as I activate my recording with DX Story, my FPS drops from 144 cap to 80 and 90. And then you're thinking, ah, that's not much. Well, it's not. But it does show that a good CPU has a big performance deficit in it. Very clean now. Water effects, not amazing. Ow, oh, oh! We've got some cultists. Don't worry. I didn't charge up my spell quick enough. There we go. Now you can see these glowing orbs floating towards me. Our mentor says they're not souls, and we hope they're not. Ah, a witch. She'll heal them as well. So if we kill them now while they've been infected, I should hopefully soon get a minion popping up. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Pop my necromancy on. There we go. Now you can't, you can't jump in the game, but if you press space by you teleport a short little distance to the sides, which is very handy. There's one of my minions. If you kill someone with a good amount of necromancy magic on them, you will get a minion out of it, which is really nice. And the minion, their health and abilities are based on the amount of damage you've done when killing someone. Now, Magic in the game isn't magic in the normal sense here. I'll get you no Everyone seems to need a magical item like that. The woman there's got her, you know, wand. I've got my magical bracers. It's very interesting indeed. Telekinesis. Let's try and grab them down. There we go. And now, fire nova. Oh, need to get out of that. Now one thing that is a shame about the game is it does get a bit repetitive, I'll give them that. The levels seem to drag on and it's extremely linear, you can only go one way. Which is very disappointing, I guess that's just the way it's been designed. They want to give a linear story based progression. But unfortunately, it does hamper the game a bit. But you can't expect much different from the engine it's using. I don't know of any massive open world crisis games, or cry engine games, excuse me, that do spectacularly. I mean, there's Ark Survival, the new the survival game, but that was plagued with issues when it launched. Oh. Something's afoot. No cloth physics either, sadly, for a cry engine game. Oh, there's their water collecting device. Interesting, I can't do anything to it. Up oh, there is a save point. Up, oh, looks like I'm going down. There is my friend. That's a piece of work, all right. 
Think you can figure out how to make it stop? I think I can make it. Now, he's the griffin and I'm the dragon. Now, that depends entirely on who you choose at the beginning of the game. If you choose to be male, the female will be a griffin. And they're essentially just a scout while you're the muscle. Get my necromancy going. Such a weird magical device. Ooh. Alright, let's see. How will we deal with that? You must oh. be the dragon. We'll see you again soon. We promise. Oh, it's the evil twins. Evil twins. Oh, I've got a sigil upgrade. So let's go to the normal smart inventory. There we are. We'll upgrade all our components. Now, as you collect those spell bits, you can combine them to make better, stronger ones. So you can focus on one upgrade. But if you do that, you do lose out on extra bits that you can use for upgrade individual spells or craft them. Now, the sigil ones is that you get for using spells out. So if I use fire lot, I'll upgrade fire. And the sigil is essentially a point I can put into that. So let's increase critical chance because I like doing big damage. Oh, it's there, the twins. Okay, come on, minions. I need some help. Telekinesis blobs to try and slow them down. There we go. That was super easy. My minions did most of the work. And here we go. The magical artifact they've been using to power their magic. Now we'll drain it, make ourselves stronger, and well we've saved done, the world. Dragon. The water returns to the land, and you can now leave the oasis. The twins are fleeing to the reliquary in Lost Zasad. I suggest you stop them before they get there. Now, now that I have the reliquary, I can now choose more magic. Delirium. The spell focuses on mind control. They don't do damage directly, instead causing enemies to damage to others or even themselves and phase. Warp space and time are target. It may translocate an enemy or tear him apart. So we'll take delirium for now. Cooly booly. Dragon, this way. They're heading into the waste. Alright. Let's go, shall we? Not that way. Let's see if we can find any artifacts. Now there's nothing really here. We already got that sigil it seems. Now their father, Count Shax, was a pretty evil guy. He essentially started mastering necromancy, but he's also part of a cult, which is really interesting. Along with the Emperor, who's actually leading the cult of the damned, essentially. It's very peculiar stuff. Where to, where to now? Well, at least there's some life around here. Oh, that sounds a bit like combat music. Yep, that's combat music. Need at least one minion. There we go. Not the only ones with some magical abilities. Oh crap! That's not good, that's not good. Yeah, sometimes quick short bursts are good for disorientating enemies, otherwise they will freeze you on the spot. Which is a bit annoying. So I've got a strange fluid little skull here, I've only seen it once. It seems to be like a damage boost thing. Oh, is that where we go? Yep, that's it. Dragon. The twins blink through here. On my way. Oh, that was super close. Oh no, 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 no. This water is freaking out. There we go. Need to yeah. There we go, save point. All right. Now, this is essentially all the game is. Once you've kind of gotten a good spell combo that you enjoy, that's it, you just carry on with the story. And while the story might not be super amazing, I kind of enjoy it to some extent, even though it gets quite repetitive. 
Let's see what this memory is. Such a terrible walk to Lost Azar. But, dear heart, it keeps the relic safe. Oh, Hadara, I do love a secret. secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one down. one down. I'll kill you. That bitch, I'll tear you apart. Oh, look. Hmm. He's still twitching a bit. My heart bleeds. Wait, whoa, 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 so the previous dragon that was here before me killed them? Does that mean they're actually undead minions? Very strange. Now, yes, if you go off the beaten path, you can sometimes find some very interesting bits and pieces as well, which is always fun. But they usually involve in wave based fighting. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Oh, oh, he had a shield. Oh, this is not good, not good, not good. Oh, blinked out just in time. Oh, they're slowing me down. Need to keep them locked down. Come on. Need to summon some minions. Not good. I missed the main guys. There we go. There we go. Got some minions showing up again. Good, good, got rid of the main one there. Anyone left? No. Good. Good, let's head in here. Oh, yep. A mini relic fairy that they use to control the undead. Perfect for us. Now, I don't have feet, but I do have a shadow, which is nice. Character's got some crazy ass hips on her. Some hourglass figure that there. Explains it. The last dragon didn't fail. She killed the twins, but they came back. Without Roth's magic. They've got some trick of their own. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's something that way. But we've got a challenge up ahead. And this is fun. See that thing in the middle? You get a lot of magical points for destroying that. Hold up. I'll deal with you now. You <laughs> oh, there's still one left over there. Homing magic is amazing. Oh! Did not expect that. He's got a shield. Think you can take me? Uh, perfect. Our minions are quite slow, sadly. Yeah, there's not very many destructible environments around here. It's quite disappointing to say the least, actually. You'd think something using this engine would have a lot more. Only one. Hmm. The fence. Anything we can upgrade? The dragon comes to play. Oh, keep them both locked down. And bye bye. Oh, she managed to get a shield up in time. Not like that helped. Not like that helped at all. Oh, they're busy fighting someone. That's why they weren't next to me. Wow. Oh, there's actually a lot of them. Interesting. 
Ultra Race thing. Alright. Oh, I've been stuck. Oh, they hit me with a really nasty spell. Come on. There we go. <laughs> There we go. Come, my minions. It's kind of hypocritical of me to actually use undead when I'm trying to stop them from using undead. Don't you think? Quite, quite so, I think. Oh. Hey. Come on, one more. There we go. On oh, fire. I have to say, the vistas in this game, quite good. Quite good indeed. But well, folks, I'll kind of leave it here. This was Lich and Battle Mage, a game I'm actually quite enjoying quite a bit, even though it is extremely linear. It's, it's actually a shame that it is this linear. Is the shield wall causing this? Why ask me? Do I look like Roth? Well, I did kind of got rid of those guys. But well, folks, like I said, this is Lich and Battle Mage. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I gave you an idea on if you want the game. If you do, Steam link is in the bottom of the description. I'm Mel. Thanks for watching, everyone. And bye-bye. You look as though you're still keen on the hunt. Is this about the relic they mentioned? We've got to find their power source or they'll flood the place with undead. What do you remember of Lost Azad? Desolate tombs and arid temples, abandoned since the death of Gavriel the Conqueror. So of course the cult is burrowed in there. This way then.